All right, so starting out chapter 10, this chapter is all about intermolecular forces. And so what we've talked about before are intramolecular forces. We haven't used that term, but that's everything we've talked about. And that's all the stuff that holds a single molecule together. It's like when you're on an intramural team, you, play, you just play other people at the same school. So intermolecular forces, we're now dealing with multiple molecules and how they interact with each other. So now it's not just a molecule by itself. Now it has neighbors. And, you know, that's important because like a glass of water isn't one water molecule. Pretty much everything we deal with is more than one molecule, except for like tires, turns out. Turns out tires are like one molecule. So when people ask me, well, what's the biggest molecule? You know, I'm like, I guess it's a tire, like a big tractor tire or something. But anyway, yeah, so if you're talking about intermolecular forces there, it'd be like, well, what happens when the tires hit each other or something? But otherwise, you know, it's one thing. But like multiple molecules in, uh, you know, my plastic cap, this eraser, metals are a little bit weird. We won't get into that, I realize. But like this board is plastic-ish stuff, ceramic, something like that. So it's multiple molecules and forces are holding them together. And we're going to talk about that throughout this whole chapter. Um, so again, we're just talking about how they interact with each other. Um, we are going to talk about one, two, three, four different types of intermolecular forces. Technically, ion ion is also one that'd be even stronger than H bonding, but it's on this chapter. And so up here, hydrogen bonding, also known as H bonding. That is our strongest intermolecular force we're going to discuss in this chapter. And so any molecules that have an OH group or an NH bond or an FH bond on them, those are going to have hydrogen bonds. Those are going to have stronger intermolecular forces. Our next most strong is ion dipole interactions. And that's exactly what it sounds like. If you remember what a dipole is, that means a polar molecule. And so these are just ions and polar molecules interacting with each other. They're gonna have very strong interactions. Then the next most strong is just polar molecules with each other. And then lastly, we have dispersion forces, which I find the most interesting. So I'm gonna do a video on each of these individually. So I have one, you know, one set of board space for each one, because I'll need it. But dispersion forces are also known as London forces or Van der Waals forces, a lot of names. All molecules have them. They're just the weakest. So if there's any other force, intermolecular force option present, it just washes it out. It's very weak compared to it. So like, oh, it has, you know, it's, it's a polar molecule, it has a dipole. That's gonna be more important to how it behaves than its London forces or its dispersion forces. And so if you have a nonpolar molecule, it's only gonna have dispersion forces. That's it. It doesn't have a dipole. It's not interacting with ions. It can't hydrogen bond because all of these would be something that would cause polarity in the molecule. So only if you see a non-polar molecule do you have to worry about dispersion forces. I mean, they're always there, but there's other stuff that's more important. And so make some room here real quick. You know, when we're looking at this, yeah. We could be like, well, you know, we got a series of molecules. Which one has the strongest intermolecular forces? You know, for example, uh-oh, line drawings. Once you go know how to read them, I don't worry about not drawing them anymore. We've got three molecules here. So, you know, which has the strongest inner molecular forces. You know, with the, you know, if it was like a puddle of each, you know, there's more than one present there, you know, has neighbors of the same type. So we've got a nonpolar molecule, a polar molecule, and a polar molecule with an OH group. So guess what? This guy can hydrogen bond. Or at least it's capable. This guy has a net dipole, so it's polar. And this is all carbons and hydrogens, eh, non-polar. So this is the strongest. This is the second strongest. Like how it's positive there, it could also be like it's the second weakest. And then this guy right here, this is the weakest. So that's kind of a quick comparison. You know, if you look at a drawing or a representation of a molecule, 
can you ID which of these features it has? And you can compare, like, you know, what has more intermolecular forces. So again, we're going to zero in on each of these individually, um, but this is just kind of an introduction for the beginning of chapter 10. And then we'll also get into things like solubility, so mixing different things together. So it's not always going to be just this thing interacting with neighbors of the same molecule, but what happens when we start mixing different molecules together? Do they mix or is it like an oil and water situation? Do they not mix? And that's another chapter with delta H in it, so enjoy. So there's a kind of a Hess's Law section in this chapter as well, just an early heads up on that. So math is going to creep into this. But uh, overall, yeah, I think it's a pretty fun chapter because we finally step out of individual molecules and their shapes and their bond energies and that sort of thing and, and really get into how they behave in groups. And that's really important because that's what's happening around us.